so with painting landscapes, um, the really most important thing is that you start the farthest away um, from yourself. So for example, the, far, the farthest thing away in this landscape painting is the sky. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna be painting is the sky. But uh, next to that, the next farthest thing away would be these trees back here in the background. And so we're gonna go ahead and paint those second. After that, we will go ahead and put our foreground of the snow ground right here. And then from there, we will be painting this snowy tree. And lastly, the barn, because it is the closest uh, thing to us. Okay, now there are a couple of things on here that you can decide to add or to not add if you feel like it. Um, one of the things is the actual snow. So in my painting, the weather, it is snowing. Um, and I decided to add some snow, but if you don't want to, you don't have to, it's up to you, it's your piece. Um, also, there is some foliage or some bushes right here in front of the barn that I uh, painted in a silhouette style. You can choose to paint those, or if you really like the look of your barn and you don't wanna cover it up with a dark silhouette bush, then you also don't need to add that as well, okay? So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, one more thing that you might need if you would like is a pencil for this very first step, but you only need a pencil for this one part right here. So in order to figure out kind of how far down we want the sky to go, we're gonna draw our horizon line, okay? And now the horizon line is not gonna be directly in the middle, which would be about right here. Instead, we're gonna go about an inch below that. Okay, so with a pencil or You can use a pencil or you can uh, eyeball it when we start painting. It's up to you. But with my pencil, I'm gonna go ahead and draw my horizon line, which is gonna be just a little bit below halfway, about right here. And I'm just gonna draw a sketch line with pencil because our paint will cover our pencil later on. I can make it a little darker for you. Okay. Now, the first colors that we're gonna be using and putting onto our paint palette would be blue and white. Now, with that blue and white, you are going to mix with your paintbrush a, a sky color blue or a baby blue. As you can see, all of our blues might be a little different. Unless you've got the kit, they'll be the same, but if you're using your own materials, it's okay if your blue is a little bit of a different hue than, than what I've got here. And as you can see in the painting, we're going to start with a light blue color at the top and progressively it's going to get lighter as we get down to this horizon line right here. Okay, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So first off, mixing the light blue. I'm going to pick up some of the blue, put it in the middle to be able to mix with it. And then I'm going to pick up some white. It's always best to start with a little bit at a time because you can always add more after you start mixing. Now, as I started mixing this, I th I'm thinking in my head, that's a little bit too light. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue to my mixture to make it a little bit darker. And I'm liking the way that looks. Now I know we're painting the sky, which is gonna use a lot of paint. So if you want, I would go ahead, add a little bit more of both. So that way you know for sure you have enough paint to work with to make your sky. Again, choose a color you like. Doesn't have to look exactly like mine. This is your art piece as well, right? So you get to decide. You are the creator of this. Okay. Now starting at the top of your canvas, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be using long breast strokes like this with your paintbrush. And you're gonna go forward and instead of going back this way without turning your brush, you're gonna bring it to the side, flip it and go back because on both sides of the brush, there's paint and you wanna make sure you use all of that paint up. Okay, so you're gonna start at the top and we're gonna be going back and forth, just like that. Okay. 
Now, as you start going down the canvas, you're gonna be running out of paint, just like I am, right? So you're gonna get some more. Now from here, I'm not gonna add more paint to my brush and instead I'm going to kind of create those wispy strokes below because that's gonna be used for blending. Okay, just like that. If you're worried about seeing brush strokes in your sky, don't, uh, don't worry about it too much because those brush strokes mean that this is a painting, right? You're supposed to see brush strokes in paintings. Now from there, while we're, we don't wanna let it dry too much, acrylic paints are, are water-based, so they do dry rather quickly. Um, so to work quickly with blending, we're gonna take a bit more of our white color, and we're going to, on the edge of this mixture that I already created, I'm gonna add some white. I'm not gonna cover the entire blue that I mixed, but I'm gonna just right over here on the side, mix in some white. And now you can see it's a lighter blue because we added white. Anytime you add white to colors, it makes it lighter. And anytime you add black to colors, it makes the color darker. Okay, now with this light blue, I'm gonna start at the very bottom, right where my horizon line is and work my way up. But I'm not gonna go all the way up here at the top because we wanna keep that in this, in the color that it is. I'm only gonna go about midway through. Okay, so starting at the bottom, similar brush strokes back and forth. Grab a little bit more of this baby blue. And work my way up about midway. And when you get to the middle, you're going to start blending back and forth. So there should be a gradual lightening of the blue to the bottom of the page. All right. So now that I'm looking at it, kind of step back. I think I might want to make it a little bit lighter right in here. So I'm more of this baby blue and I'm just going to add it right here where I wanted it. All right, now there's your sky. Now, while your sky is drying, you can go ahead and let it dry all the way. Again, it will dry pretty quickly, so don't worry about it taking too long. I'd like everybody to go ahead and we're going to rinse off our brush, our, our large brush. The best way to rinse off brushes I have found is to brush up against the bottom of your cup, like you're painting the bottom of your cup instead of just swirling around in the water, literally press the brush to the bottom in the same motion that you're painting. And that will help take the paint out of the bristles without ruining your brush. Okay, from there, go ahead and use your paper towel or a rag and dry it off. Once your brush is clean, I'd like everybody to grab their- Yep, I'll go ahead and slow down while you guys are cleaning. Thank you for letting me know, great job. Thank you. You're very welcome.
Now, if you guys got your kits, I, I am actually looking through everybody to see your progress. If you guys got your kits, that means your canvas doesn't look like mine. That means it has edges. And I do want to remind those of you who have edges on your canvas, go ahead and, and bring the paint all the way across the edge, unless you want your edge to have a certain color. If you do want your edge to have a certain color, you can go ahead and leave the edges how they are right now, like blank with a little bit of brush strokes, because you can paint over that at the end. You can use white to create a border on the edge. You can use black. You can use the red barn color if you want, or you can literally bring your painting to the edge and just wrap it right around the corner on, on all sides. All right, so while those of you who asked me to slow down are still catching up or working on that, those of you who are ready, what I'd like you to do now is take your medium sized brush and just go ahead and pour uh, and your black paint and get some black paint onto your palette. What we're gonna be creating, what color we're gonna be creating is it's very hard, it might be hard to see through Zoom, but it's kind of a, a very dark navy blue. And that's what the color is gonna be used to paint these background trees. Okay, and how we do that is we mix, remember, very little bit at a time, black with the blue right here. You can use this baby blue if you want, and you don't have to go in with the with the normal blue because the black will bring it will bring it darker right away. Okay. So and when I mean little, I mean very, very little. I'm just going to take the very edge of my medium sized brush and I dipped it into the black and I'm going to start mixing it right here until I find a color of dark blue that I particularly like. It might look a little bit gray at first, and if that's the case, then it's still too light and you're gonna need more black. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more black and add it in, mix it in. Okay, now mine still is looking a bit too gray, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna add some of this blue from over here. I'm gonna take the tip of my brush and add some more blue. So to create this again, just blue and black is what you're mixing to create a dark hint of blue color. All right, that is better. Okay, if you if you notice, I'm, I'm kind of wiping my brush on the edge of my palette because it'll scrape some excess paint off of my brush because you don't want to um, use a brush with too much paint on it on your canvas because you'll end up making strokes that it might be a little bit too thick than what you wanted. All right, so for, I'm going to give you guys a few more uh, seconds or one more minute to get your color mixed. For those of you who have your cameras on, um, and even if you don't have your cameras on, down at the bottom there's a reactions button. If anybody, if everybody can give me a thumbs up when they are ready to move forward with the background trees. Um, excuse me. Yes. I'm on a Chromebook, so I can't do reactions. Can I just raise my hand in participants? Yes, that will work too. A raising hand in participants or a thumbs up will work just fine. Thank you for asking. Okay. Uh, what's the gray for? What is the gray for? Yeah. The gray, the <laughs> dark blue gray, 
is for these trees back here in the background. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I still see a few people mixing still. I'll bring this up closer so you can kind of see what color I have here. What brush should we use? This will be your medium size brush. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, I think it's safe to say we can go ahead and move forward. So what you're going to do, you're going to grab some of this dark gray paint onto your medium sized brush, wipe off the edges if you need to. And we're going to be making three background trees. Now you'll notice all three trees are not the same size. So the first tree uh, that we will be painting will be the medium sized tree. The second tree we'll paint is going to be a smaller tree. And then the third tree we'll paint in the background will be the largest. Okay. Now, if you want your first tree to be the largest, that's absolutely fine. If you want the second tree to be medium and the third tree to be small and create kind of a diagonal line going down, that's totally up to you. If you want all three to be the same size, you can do that as well. If you want all of them to be this smaller shape, that's totally fine also. I just thought for my painting to make them different sizes to create more depth um, and realism in this painting. Because in nature, things are typically not the same size or identical looking. Typically in nature, things are all different shapes and sizes. Okay, to make these trees, what we're gonna do is gonna be about the size of the tip of your brush to the edge of the metal part on your brush. That's gonna be about how tall your first tree is going to be, okay? or maybe the size of your thumb, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start at the top of the tree and you're gonna make kind of a, a slanted line going down. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. And that one had a little curve on it, okay? And you're gonna keep doing that all the way down. And the tree will be wider at the bottom than it is on the top. And don't worry about what the bottom of it looks like because it's so far away in the distance, we don't need to add much detail. So we're not going to be adding a trunk or anything like that. I think I want my tip to be a little bit thinner. So I'm going to bring the line up a little bit. And there you go, there's our first tree. If you'll notice the left side doesn't look like the right side and that's a part of nature and they're not supposed to be identical. And my friend Bob Ross would say, we're gonna go ahead and, and give this tree a friend. Okay, a happy little friend right next to him or her. And we're going to make this little tree a little bit smaller. So again, same process, starting at the top, little curved angled line. Do the same thing on the other side. It can look a little different if you want. And gradually work your way down.
Okay, you're going to do the same exact thing for the last background tree. But the only thing different is that it's going to be a bit taller. So we're going to start it up here. Okay, same angled line. Did same on the other side. Can look a little bit different if you want. And then working your way down. Small strokes at a time. Now you'll see that right starting right here, it's kind of blending into that smaller tree. That's absolutely okay because they're all in the background. So you can't see where they overlap. But that's what it's supposed to look like. And if you are finished with that, you can go ahead and clean this brush. Next color we're going to be using is green. So you can go ahead and start shaking up your green if you need to. Otherwise, if it's ready to go, go ahead and add some green to your palette. Okay, and you'll notice that this large tree is not the same color green that came out of the tube, right? It's a bit darker. So in order to create that color, we're just going to be adding some black to our green. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start mixing. You can go ahead and use your large brush again. We will be using both the large brush and the medium size brush for this tree. And I'm going to take some of this green, a lot more of that green, because we're going to be, we want more than enough for this tree, because it is a rather large tree. And I'm scooping. Can you pause real quick? Yes, I can pause. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, are we about ready to move forward or still need 
a little bit more time. I've got two thumbs up. I got a third and a fourth. Thank you, Dwight. I see you over there. <laughs> okay, looks like I got a few thumbs up. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. So with this green that I moved over into another little bowl over here, I'm gonna take again, very, very small amount of this black and add it to my green. You can always add more later to make it darker if you're not satisfied with the color. Scrape off the excess or extra paint on your brush. And I think I want it a bit darker, so I'm gonna go back in. Let's do another dip into the black and mix. Now the beauty of painting is if you go too dark, you can always add more green or white to make it lighter. And I think I'm even gonna make it a little bit darker than that. So one more dip into my black and I'm gonna mix. Okay, I think I'm liking that color. So you can see that this is gonna be the dark green that we're gonna use for our large frosted tree. Okay, and now you'll notice on this painting, the tip of the tree goes off the page and that's just to show some perspective. If you don't want that to happen on your painting and you want to see the tip of the tree, then you can just start just like we did with these background trees with the tip right at the top and work your way down. But if you want it to, to go off the page a little bit, then you can follow the direction that I'm going to be doing. So the large tree reaches about from the edge, you're gonna cover a little bit of this background tree, from the edge of this background tree to about the center of your canvas, which is gonna be about right here. So this entire space will be the large tree, okay? If it's a little bit wider on yours or a little bit thinner on yours, that's okay. Remember, all of ours will be a little bit different. Okay, so I'm gonna take some and pick up some of this dark green, dark forest tree green on my large brush. And I'm gonna start at the very top of the canvas and make a sideways line like that. And then I'm gonna go on the other side as well. Sorry about the shadow, it makes it hard to see. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit thicker because the tip of my tree goes off the canvas. Okay, from there, same thing that we did with this background trees, except it's just a bit bigger. And we're gonna be adding some detail to our tree with our medium sized brush after this. So don't worry about the edges looking perfect the way that you want them because we're going to add more detail later on. Now I'm simply dragging my brush down and making tapping motions with my large brush, just like this, in a slanted motion. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna pick up some paint. We're gonna do the same thing on this side, some tapping. And then in the middle, you can just drag it down if you want. And this larger tree is closer 
to us. So we are going to be coming down here onto the snow or what will be snow. And I actually, we're going to be doing the snow while this tree dries. So if you're gonna add some more green down here later, that's okay. So don't worry about the bottom of your large tree because we, we're gonna add some more later. Acrylic painting is all about layers. We're gonna continue adding layers over one another. So, uh, so your paint doesn't dry on your large brush. Go ahead and rinse off your large brush now. and pick up your medium sized brush again. All we're gonna be doing next is adding some detail to the edges of our large tree. I'm actually already really liking the way that this edge is looking, but I'm gonna define this side a bit with my medium sized brush and maybe add some smaller branches at the top. So I'm gonna dip into my dark forest green and all I'm doing with, an, with the edge of my brush in a sideways diagonal angle, I'm adding some different strokes and branches just on the left and the right side of my tree. And some can be shorter and longer than others. Right here on this bottom right-hand side, I'm not gonna to worry too much about what that looks like because our barn is actually going to cover a little bit of that side. So you don't need to be worrying about the bottom half of the right-hand side of this large tree because it will be covered. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, this just looks like a big green blob on my painting. Well, how you create the depth of the tree will be with the snow when we add it after the, after the green dries, okay? Go ahead and rinse, when you're done, rinse your medium sized brush. Next, we're gonna be using our large brush again, and we're gonna be painting this snow at the bottom. It's gonna look pretty similar to what it already looks like right now, because our canvas is white. However, snow is ice. What that means is there's gonna be hints of blue mixed with your white. It's very hard to kind of see it, but there is a little teeny tiny wincy bit of blue mixed with this white. And if you can see kind of these brush strokes, I used a lot of paint and a thick amount of paint in order to create this sort of layering of snow effect versus with the sky, I painted very, very smoothly and I didn't want there to be a lot of bumps or layers where you saw the paint, but with the snow, that's okay because it shows that it's snow and looks more like snow with those um, added textures. So what you'll need to do is pick up some of your white. Again, you can move over quite a bit. Go 
because we're going to be painting the bottom half of the canvas. And using just a teeny, eensy weensy bit of this blue, the blue that we mixed in the beginning that we have not covered yet, or you can use your, your regular blue, but you're going to want to use less of that because it's not lightened yet. You're going to pick up a little teeny weeny bit of that blue and mix it into your white. And it might still look white to you, but there is a tiny bit of blue in there and that is all you need for your snow. How are we doing? Need me to pause for a second here? Yes, please. Okay. We'll go yeah. ahead. Okay, we'll go ahead and pause while you're getting that light, 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 blue, white mixed. That's what it should look like. As you can see it right next to the regular white, it is a little bit slightly bluer. This one. When you're ready, don't forget to give me that thumbs up so I know we can go ahead and get started up again. Okay. I've got many thumbs up, so I think we're going to go ahead and get started. This next step isn't too complicated, so if you're still catching up, um, you should be able to, to, to get this done pretty easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to take lots and lots of that blue color. See how it's kind of globbed onto my brush? That's what you want in order to create those textures with your paint. Okay, so lots and lots of that white-ish blue, okay? And you're just gonna start like we did at, with the sky, painting the snow. Now with the snow, instead of back and forth, I'm kind of doing a little bit of round motions. Again, don't worry about this horizon line right here, because we're gonna go right over that with the barn, as well as the edge of your tree. We're gonna add some more green to the edge of our tree. So if you go over your tree a little bit with this blue white, not to fret, we can cover it back up. The only line that you want to be careful with on the horizon is right here by these background trees. I am going to go a little bit slower. So that's more of a smooth line and then back to kind of round, back and forth, brush strokes. Okay, and then it's already covered, but I'm going to add a little bit more. Circular, kind of cloud-like brush strokes. 
kind of random. It's all very random. Not particular at all. Okay, and you can see that by using a lot of paint, you create a little bit of texture. You can kind of see it when I shine the glare on it like that with the light. See the texture? Okay. Now, while these two pieces are drying, meaning the snow at the bottom and you're still your green tree may still be drying, um, we can take a moment to go and rinse out our water cups because they are a bit opaque, meaning they've got a lot of paint in them and we, we wanna make sure they're easy to clean our brushes. So while you're waiting for those to dry, go ahead and rinse out your water cups with some fresh water. And I'm going to do the same. Okay, if you're back with your fresh water, go ahead and grab a, a magazine or a book or something and you can go ahead and just give your painting a little bit of a, of a fan. So it can speed up the drying process. We are going to be mixing some colors, so that will help give us some time as well soon. And the reason you don't want to add snow on top of your green tree if it's not wet yet, because then the white paint will start mixing with the green, and then you're going to have some, some light green snow, and nobody wants that. All right, well, that is still drying a little bit. We can go ahead and start making our barn red color, okay? I didn't rinse off my big brush yet, so I still need to do that with my fresh water.
right, so in order to make barn red, what you're gonna need to do is add some red onto your palette. Before we start mixing, I just wanna point out to you guys, you'll notice that there are many other different colors also on the barn. It's not just red, so there's some black, it's kind of like this really dark color that you can see here that kind of outlines where the wood lines would be for the barn. So there's some here, also creates some shadow and some depth. And there's also this white up here at the top and also some black around the edges. Now we're not gonna be adding those details until after this base of this barn is done, which is the red color. And so, don't worry about what your barn looks like until we start adding those details. It, again, just like the green tree, it might just look like a big red blob on your painting, but don't fret, it'll, it'll start to look like a barn when we add more of the detail colors, okay? And brush strokes, I also wanna point that out. Brush strokes are also very important for the barn. And so for this top roof of the barn, your brush strokes are gonna be from side to side like that. For the left-hand side, you'll see this, this bottom right here, this door cuts the barn in half. For the left side, your brush strokes are also gonna be from left to right, side to side. But for the door of the barn, they're gonna be up and down. The brush strokes are gonna be up and down, okay? Just wanna point that out before we get started. Okay. So you should have some red on your palette. Now, using your large brush again, we're gonna pick up some of that red and put it in a place where you can use it to mix. Okay, from there, in order to make the red darker, we're going to add a little black. So taking the tip of my brush again, very small amount of black, I'm going to add that to my red. I want it to look a bit darker than that still, so I'm going to go in and add more black. I picked up a little too much there. If you feel like you have gone too dark, you can always pick up more of that fresh red and add it in to lighten it up a bit if you feel like you've gotten too dark. Also, acrylic paints dry darker than when they are wet. Just a, a quick tidbit for that. They do become darker as they dry on your canvas. So if you're feeling like mm, it's quite not dark enough, just really slight on it slightly darker when it's wet, it'll dry darker when it's on the canvas, okay? But for me, I'm feeling like I want this a little bit darker, so I'm gonna, still gonna add a little bit of black. Okay, so there I'm, I'm liking that barn red now. I'll go ahead and give you guys a minute. Give me the thumbs up when you feel that you're ready and you have your, your perfect barn red for you ready to go. Okay, I see a couple. I'm still waiting for a few more thumbs up, so let's wait a little bit longer. Mm 
Okay, now for the barn, for the starting of the painting of the barn, we're not gonna pick up too much onto our brush. We're gonna use very little, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of outline the edge of our barn first before we start painting it in. We're gonna almost kind of draw it out with our paint on our brush first. And you'll notice the angle for the roof is an obtuse angle. So it's larger than a right angle. What that means, it's more of a very wide angle right here, okay? And so just keep that in mind when you are starting to make the point of your roof. However, if you want your roof to be a little bit more angled, go for it, that's up to you, okay? And you'll see that since this is about halfway across the canvas, the roof is gonna be about halfway in between that. All right, so eyeballing it, and again, a bounce here, it doesn't have to be perfect, about halfway through, midway to that, that's where the point of my um, barn roof is going to be, about right here, okay? Now taking the edge of my large brush, we're literally going to draw slightly the top of my roof on the left side and the top of my roof on the right side. The top of the roof has a little bit of a lip right here. So we're gonna make that next. And how to do that is you're gonna change the direction of your brush and angle it back towards you. So it's almost as if this line and this line are parallel lines, almost. Now the lip of this roof is not gonna be that long. It's that we're gonna cut it in half. So about halfway up this line, this short line about right there, we're gonna make the edge of our barn, the side wall of our barn. I'm gonna make it go just a little bit past the large tree. And for the bottom of the barn, you're just gonna go straight across to the edge of the canvas. Doesn't have to be perfectly straight because we're gonna add some foliage and dark silhouette grass and bushes down here. So it doesn't need to be perfect because we're gonna layer over that later on. So right where these two lines meet on the left-hand side, so use my pencil to point it out, right there, straight across that point is going to be the bottom of our roof, or the edge of our roof. So you can go ahead and draw yourself a line going straight across right there. And then to create that door, the edge of that door, I'm gonna cut this rectangle, this rectangle right here in half with a line. So now we have kind of the edges of our barn and we can kind of visualize more of, of what it's going to look like. I noticed that this tip of the roof is higher up than this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to expand it a little bit higher. Okay, just like that. Okay, that's better. So the right side of the barn, just like the tip of the tree, is off of the canvas. 
or for those of you who have edges, it'll continue on to the edge of the canvas and wrap around. All right, from there, you can go ahead and rinse off your large brush. That's all we needed it for was mixing and creating the edges. But for the rest, we're gonna use the medium size brush. So go ahead and rinse off your large brush. Okay, so now we're gonna be using the medium sized brush again. What we're gonna do is we're going to create now this base color all over the barn and filling it in with this barn color red. But remember to pay close attention to the way that you direct your brush. So the direction that you're painting in. Remember this top triangle needs to be side to side. This left square needs to be side to side and the right square needs to be up and down. Okay, so starting up top with the top roof of the barn, we're gonna take, pick up some of our red barn red and start filling it in from side to side. Paying close attention and making sure to not go on the outside of our outline. Okay, and for myself, I don't want to lose track of where this line is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up just a little bit of black, like the teeniest, tiniest bit with my medium sized brush. And I'm just going to draw with my brush a line with the black going across the bottom of the roof. So I don't lose track of where that line is, because if we just go in with red, we won't see it anymore. So I'm going to draw with a little bit of black, the very tip edge of the roof right there. And then you don't even have to wash that off. Just go ahead and dip it back into your barn red and continue filling in. We're going to go with the left square first, going side to side. And just like the snow, thicker, thicker amounts of paint is okay for this because we're gonna create that texture so it looks like pieces of wood with our brush strokes. It's almost like planks going across. And if you have a little bit of extra layer of that red, that's okay. Okay, now I'll go ahead and lift that so you can see the texture I'm talking about there. See the texture, how I create those planks? Okay, now same thing, but now for this square, we're going to go up and down. I 
instead of side to side. So picking up a little bit of paint, going up and down. Oops, I just picked up the wrong red, but that's okay. You can just go over it. And if you don't want to lose track of that line, you can see it because the brush strokes are going different directions, but you can go ahead and add a black line in the middle there as well. Okay, now for the barn, it's okay that it is still wet and we're gonna continue adding details because as we add the black onto the barn, onto the red, onto the wet red paint, those shadows will kind of combine and blend with the red that's already there to create more depth in our wood, quote unquote, quote unquote, planks. Okay, now, now what that would look like, you're going to need very, very little black in order to start doing this, and you don't need to wash your brush, okay, because we're going to be kind of using it to blend. Now, I have a little bit of black here already on the edge. I'm not even going to dip into this larger black spot here. I'm just going to take a little bit from the edge that's already kind of mixed with my red, okay, just like that. And starting at the top, being careful not to lay your hand in the wet paint, the left-hand corner of the roof, I'm going to drag some of that blackish red inward to the roof, remembering to keep my brush strokes side to side. And I just worked my way up just a little bit, about halfway up. Okay, we're going to add some more shadow to the top of the roof, but on the right hand side, working our way back over the other way. And then blending towards the middle like that. And a little bit more over on the right side of the roof. Going back and forth, kind of creating those plank-like lines with our brush. Back and forth. Can you slow down a bit? Yes. Please? I will pause right after the roof. So just going back and forth like this. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So that's how it should be looking random, messy, not blended perfectly. You want it to look like that because that creates kind of that rustic wood-ish type look.
Okay. How are we feeling? Ready to move forward? Thumbs up if you're ready. This is the yeah. worst painting. <laughs> Okay, I've got one thumbs up. We've got a few more. We've got some, okay. So we're gonna keep doing that. We're gonna keep adding that texture and that depth to our barn but in just a little bit of other areas. So again, don't need to clean the brush off. Go ahead and dip it into a little bit of your black, wiping it off on the edge. And starting over here on the left-hand bottom side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna bring that black towards the middle. You can work your way up. About halfway. Remembering to brush stroke from side to side. And then in the top right hand side of the square, bringing it over. Again, quite random, creating that texture and depth in your barn walls. Okay, and same thing on this square but just making sure to go up and down with your strokes. And we're focusing more so kind of on the bottom left and bottom right hand side of the barn door. So we're gonna start with the bottom left hand side, working our way up. And on the right hand side. And I'm going to bring a little bit at the top. Bring it down. And so you'll notice that the wet paint on the barn will start mixing with the black that you add. That's okay. We want that to happen. All right, so that's how it should be looking. Some spots are brighter than others, some spots are darker than others, and that's what we want. All right, now before the barn completely dries, we are going to be adding these darker lines. 
in certain places to again kind of define the wood planks of the barn. So again, you don't need to clean your brush quite yet. Adding a very, very little amount of black, flattening out your brush, starting at the top. We're going to make an outline of the top of the roof again, still showing some of that red through. Back down the other side. We're going to add a line right here, a longer one right below it. I'm going to define this edge of the roof a little bit more. Couple lines there. As well as the bottom of the roof right here. I'm going to make that line a little bit thicker. Okay, grabbing a little bit more of your black paint, wiping off the edge. Not directly on the edge of this barn, but right next to it, about a centimeter over. We're going to make a line going down. That's the edge of the barn. A couple lines going across. Different lengths, they don't need to go all the way across to the middle. And from the middle going th over to the left. Again, do not need to make contact with those other lines, just like that. Okay, and for the barn door, same thing, but the lines are just going to go upward. Go ahead. Excuse me, I have to go, but thank you. This was very fun. You're welcome. We have it recorded, so if you want to finish it later, uh, you can find it. I believe we'll post it or send it out via email, probably. That'd be great. Bye. Bye. Have fun. Okay, now once you're done with those defining lines on your barn, you're gonna go ahead and let your barn dry before we add the snow at the top of the barn. And while you're waiting for that to dry, go ahead and wash your medium-sized brush. And we're just gonna add some final touches to our painting, which is the snow on the tree, a little bit of grass marks coming, popping up through the snow at the bottom, and if you'd like, you can draw uh, snowflakes falling and a silhouette bush in front of your barn.
we will be using the medium sized brush to add snow to our large tree. And if you do not have any more of the color that you mixed for the snow down here, or if it dried out, you can go ahead and start mixing that again. So in order to do that, all you need is a lot of white and very little bit of blue to make your snow color. What are we doing? Uh, we're mixing more snow color. So lots of white, teeny tiny bit of blue, because we're gonna add some snow on top of our tree. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, if you'll notice the snow, they're all different shapes and sizes, these snow patches on the tree. So be very uh, free spirited with it. Don't worry about the shape of your snow blobs. Um, the less similar they are, the better. But you just notice the direction that they're going. So on the left hand side, they land and they sit on top of the branches. So they're going towards the left. On the right hand side, they're going towards the right. And in the middle, they're kind of more, um, more circular or oval because they're coming out towards you. Okay, so starting at the top, we're going to go ahead and add our first snow blob. It's a fancy term. Gonna come down here towards the right. And I'm going to be going kind of left and right, left and right, not all one side at a time. Go again towards the left. Go over towards the right. Do a couple in the middle. Back to the left, and over to the right, making sure not to touch your barn. More in the middle, longer one here, small. And when you get to the bottom, your snow can kind of meet to the ground and kind of cover a little bit of that edge of the tree. Okay, so there is your snow covered tree. The top of your roof of your barn should be dry by now. So with the remaining, if you have too much on your brush, you can go ahead and scrape off a little bit. Very carefully, we're gonna add a little bit of snow to the edge of this roof, getting thinner as you work your way towards the left. And same thing on the right side. Not perfect lines, just kind of blotched white lines like that.
And when you have finished putting snow on your tree in the top of your roof of your barn, you can clean your medium sized brush and get your smallest brush ready. Next up, what we're going to use the smallest brush for is to create those little grass marks that are popping up through the snow. And we're not going to use solid black for that. We're going to use a kind of tainted dark greenish black using, uh, if you have more left of the green that you used for the tree, you can use that, or you can just use your solid green that you have. And we do not need very much for this at all. So I'm going to move it over to a place where I can mix with it. And very little teeny tiny bit of black, mix it with your green. I want it even darker than that. It's going to be almost black, but just with a hint of green in it. It's like a greenish black. Like All right, some of these grass marks are going to be larger, some will be smaller. Again, remember nature is not symmetrical. They should all look a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to add one over here in the top left hand side. And again, your grass marks don't need to be exactly where my grass marks are. Wherever you like to see some grass poking up out of your snow, go for it. Just don't add too many, otherwise it might start looking like a, a Dalmatian floor snow of snow. In order to make these grass marks, what we're going to do with your brush, your smallest brush, is you're going to make some lines going up from the same starting point. Okay, so there's my first grass mark. I'm going to add a slightly smaller one down here with less strokes. Like that. Maybe there's a couple pieces down here. Teeny tiny one over there. Another kind of medium sized one right there. Couple lines over here. Maybe a couple lines over here. Okay, so just like that, here and there, little grass popping up out of the snow. Finally, we will be adding uh, some foliage or some bushes right here in front of the barn or, and on the side of the barn. And it's basically going to be the same strokes as our small grass strokes, except just a little bit bigger, using the same dark blackish green that we created for the grass. Okay, so starting over on the left hand side of the barn. I'm going to make my first little bush. Starting at the center, working my way up, kind of almost like the opposite of what we did for the trees. Okay, so there's one. And we're going to do a slightly larger one here, covering the barn. Okay, 
If the red of your barn is still not a little dry, that's okay. Mine isn't, but you can just go over it with the black, add more, or not black, but the black green, add more right on top of the red. Mine was starting to look a little bit symmetrical, so I'm gonna change it up a bit. Remember, nature is not symmetrical or similar looking. And then right at the bottom or the base of these bushes in the bottom of the barn, I'm just gonna go back and forth with this dark black green with my small brush and make some back and forth strokes, kind of creating the dirt that's near the bottom of the barn where it meets the snow. All right, now in your painting, it's a beautiful sunny day with the snow on the floor. You can leave it as is, but if the weather in your painting is, is currently snowing, then you can go ahead and add some white dots all over your painting. Now you'll notice that these white dots are all different shapes and sizes, right? So using your smallest brush, if you, if you are going to add snow today to your painting, falling snow, I should say, snowflakes. You're gonna clean your smallest brush. And quite literally pick up some of that snow color that you made. and just start adding dots, starting from the top of your painting and working your way down. You don't need to add any towards the bottom. If you wanna cover some of those grass pieces, you can with a little bit of white dots, but really you don't need to add dots to the bottom because it'll just blend in with the snow that's already there. So starting at the top, I'm gonna make just some larger dots here and there, kind of randomly place them over here on the right hand side. You can put some on the green parts of your tree. I'm gonna go back in now and add some very small dots some close to the bigger ones that I just made, some farther away. Wherever you feel like you want some snowflakes to be falling, you go right ahead and add it. Covering some of your barn. Again, the, those bushes are probably still wet, so be careful when you go over those. Mm 
I'm gonna add some over some of my grass marks randomly here and there. And I want a couple more small ones covering my tree. All right, everybody. So that concludes our painting. You really can decide on, on how much of a blizzard you want to create on your on your uh, painting with the weather that you've got going on. But for me, it's kind of a light dusting of snow. If you want to create more of a blizzard, by all means, go ahead and add many more of those white dots, but you don't want to cover up too much of the work that you've created so far. And if it's all right with everybody, if you don't have your camera on, um, if, if you would turn it on and hold up your finished painting to your camera, we're going to go ahead and take a group photo of our work. So I'm going to go ahead and take the spotlight. Oh, they look so great. Awesome work, everybody. I see maybe someone added a snowman in front of their barn. That's totally okay. If you guys want to add a snowman later to sitting right in front of your barn, that'd be awesome. Oh my gosh, these look so great. Well done, everybody. Well done.